Hello everyone, um, Michael Crouch from Texas here um, to talk about Video Talk 2. Um, our, we apparently have a colleague who say, states that uh, an article that they read or a study that they read proves that uh, hypnosis has um, been shown to work in cases of multiple personality disorder. Do we believe this? Are we inclined to believe it? Um, my gut reaction is that we do not have enough information to go on. Not enough information is provided um, to help me make this determination. Um, if a colleague of mine said that, I would be pretty skeptical. Um, I would probably ask, you know, what study? What's the title of the article? Who wrote it? Uh, what are their credentials? Um, Etc. Because uh, as we learned from um, some of the videos that we watched this week and some of the um, articles, uh, you have to critically evaluate the source material, um, paying special attention to uh, the you know the people who wrote it. So um, if my colleague is quoting I don't know an article from Fox News or an article from you know even. Uh, one of the more liberal news media outlets, I would still be very skeptical of that because the news media is in, is oftentimes inherently biased. And so um, I don't know that I would necessarily trust that without actually reading the article myself. And e even if they were able to, you know, give me the article's title, the journal name, you know, etc., I probably would have to go and read the study myself before I would accept or be open to accepting it as um, truth. Another thing that really bothers me about the statement is the use of the word prove because the word prove has a permanent sort of connotation to it and um, I don't know that I necessarily believe the word proof to, you know, kind of in, prove to inherently mean that it is, that it is gospel, you know. Um, some things that I do believe that about, you know, the theory of evolution. It's a theory. Um, and the word theory in the scientific, scientific community, you know, has this connotation to it that this idea has been around, it has been tested, it has been highly researched and public, uh, published about. Um, and in the scientific community, a theory is generally accepted as truth. Um, however, you know, a, a novel idea um, or something that doesn't have a lot of research uh, around it probably is not going to be accepted as gospel, like the theory of relativity or the theory of evolution, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so the use of the word prove. Um, I don't, I don't like. I probably would have been more open to it if uh, the prompt or my colleague had said that this study suggests or this study indicates that there is a positive correlation here um, because with new and novel research that's really all that you can say with any amount of confidence I think. Um, my husband is um, a biomedical researcher and um, he's so he's actively involved in research and we talk about what he does all the time and so I have a little bit of knowledge about what um, what scientists would say about their work um, and that's another thing that we have to be careful of is um, misquoting work so the article that they're you know, referencing may very well say that the it's that the data suggests, or um, we we are inferring from the data this correlation. And my colleague may be over exaggerating, saying that it proves um, that it's been you know proves that hypnosis works. In case I mean, and really, what does that even mean? Hypnosis works. You know, that's that again is a very ambiguous point of this. Um, of the uh, prompt, I mean, it works how? What does it do? Um, you know, I would, 
be very skeptical because of the lack of specificity um, in the way that my colleague is describing this article. Um, so in short, no, I would not um, outright uh, believe or take the statement at face value. Um, there would be a lot more digging that I would have to do personally uh, before I were to accept that as truth. So um, that's me, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk.